Excuse me. Real quick. My microphone's put in. Am I live? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything yet, but we'll see. <laughs> I won't. Where the hell is the live chat? Welcome to the live chat. Remember to guard your privacy and aid by community guidelines. All right, I'm getting there. I got the, you just created the event. It says you're live. Oh, I got 33 people. Unfortunately, I cannot see. Oh, here it is. People are starting to show up. Woo, woo. Okay, so I'm live for the Global Maker Fest hosted by Arbor Tech. So let me see. Maybe I should do this to my bros at Arbor Tech. I'm refreshing. Oh, wow. So many people. I'm just checking. I'm, I'm 15 minutes early, so let's call this the pre-show. So if anybody wants to get chill in the pre-show. Oh, All right. Very cool. This time I'm on my computer, so I can actually take text messages. Text, text, text messages. So if anybody wants to ask me any special questions in the pre-show, because we're going to go live at, uh, actually, we're going to be live for an hour and 15 minutes. I hope we have a lot to talk about. Let's see. So my phone is free. I can take text messages from my special friends that are watching who know my phone number. Yesterday, my phone wasn't free. I'm setting up. A lot of people ask about my gear. I talked a little bit about it yesterday. This is a Luma Cube. I have another Luma Cube. Just two little lights I picked up off of an Instagram advertisement. They're actually really good because you can stick lights in certain spots that you can't. <laughs> and the cool thing about the Luma Cube, this is not an endorsement. I don't know these people whatsoever. I paid full price for all this stuff. I'm going to try not to curse today because I cursed a little yesterday. It's not cool. You could change the intensity, and then, of course, it makes the battery last. So by pushing the intensity right here, Jack I'm at 10%. Who is? Jackman. Oh, hey, Jackman. What's up, bro? So right now, this light is at 10%. You can see it does a really nice fill light. This is my new favorite shirt. This is a sweatshirt from Cohart with a pocket. I've been wanting to put a pocket on the outside of my zipper hoodies for a long time, and they kind of beat me to it with this <coughs> sweatshirt. So you'll see me wearing this for the next six months until it gets too many holes in it. Then I just replace it with the next cool thing. What's up? <coughs> Cali is the place to be screwball with all those other California. Michael Doherty, the finger joiner still looks amazing. Thank you, guys. Actually, we have it here. Let me go grab it. This is the pre-show after all. Isaac, the clothing's on hold until after the virus. Clothing is on hold because it's going to be manufactured in New York City, which is the, the lockdown. So you can see here the stool. And a couple of things that we looked at it and realized. Aaron's with me on the other side. We, took, we could have left this piece in and folded it up and down. Would have got more strength here. We could have even left a piece here and folded it up. So just some slight improvements that take place. That's why every software has version one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because as soon as you make it, you start realizing the things you could have done better. I have a couple of props nearby. Anybody recognize this? Hand tool rescue. Let's see, any questions? Jimmy, do you have a preferred product to release all rusted bolts when taking apart vintage machines. Well, sometimes you use evaporust as best as you can. Sometimes it does not get between that molecular bond that's deep down inside the joint where there's two surfaces that have been sliding on each other for 100 years. I think what you need to do is heat it up. Heat it and cool it and heat it and cool it and slight tapping. You don't want to deform the metal, especially when it's hot. That's really the best, the best, the best. Heating and cooling and heating and cooling and just increased pressure you got to be careful though with a bolt if you overheat it you'll break it so that's why i say heat it let it get cold heat it let it get cold small wood shop run by myself making furniture hello hello from the jimmy thank you for inspiring me to start making stuff stay safe thank you very much yep 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 thank you very much let me see it's my buddy 
<clears throat> so we're working on the packaging for the razor blades. Is that a razor blade sitting right here? There's got to be one right in front of me. My buddy Doug is working on the packaging. So oh, here's one. So when you buy a razor blade, there you go. When you buy this razor blade, it's going to be wrapped in this poster. It's this old timey poster. <clears throat> so when you buy one of these, it's coming up on the website in the next couple of weeks. It's going to be wrapped in this poster, which we're going to be printing any minute now. And so you get a poster and a, and a razor blade. Right now, let me just tell Doug I'm live streaming. Doug is. If you got something you're good at doing and you want to make a video of it, do it. So you'll find an audience. So what was the question? Uh, my question is, I make custom eyeglass frames. I've often thought of doing a YouTube channel on frame making, yeah. but I struggle with who would want to watch this. Doesn't matter. I get so many letters from people that say, I don't make anything. I just love watching things be created. So it's really important to just go with your impulse. And the worst that could happen is you end up with a portfolio of you making things that you get to show to your potential clients. It's, or, you know, your, your, your generations and your family to come can see what you did when you... <laughs> Imagine if we had YouTube videos of my grandfather right now or my great grandfather. Me, my great grandfather was a barber in Brooklyn. He would cut hair in Brooklyn. If I had videos of him like tooling around with a big oh, giant yeah. handlebar mustache on his old abandoned YouTube channel, that would be incredible. Well, the thing I always say to people is when you're watching YouTube videos, don't necessarily watch what's being made, but watch what the maker is, how they're moving their hands and right. what they're doing with their hands. Because there's things that they're doing that they don't even know that they're doing that are helping them make the thing. Right. Well, Berkey said it to me years ago. He said, you know, he was, he was actually did like a little clip on one of my, my blogs, uh, one of my vlogs. And he said, watch, watch Jimmy Duresta, not because you like him, but because of what his hands are doing. He said something very similar to what you just said. Eric's in there. He says, how many tools are needed to fill the gaping hole inside you? I, I'm still working on it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, you don't know what you need till you see it. And it's one of those things. I'm at that point now in my life where I don't know what I need until I see it. And then when I see it, I'm like, holy S-H-I-T. I need that right now. I'm going to try not to curse in this episode. Right. I was like, I need that. I need to figure out what that is. You know, when you're driving and like the, the way we all, the way we all live our lives, I know I say we, meaning all the dirtbags like me. Yeah. When you're driving and you look up every driveway you pass, looking for that one diamond in the rough that you know the soto four-door giant fin 1958 sedan or something that you could then take and revitalize in fact a couple of weeks ago a funny story my buddy came to visit me and he drove here from massachusetts and on his way here he's like oh i passed that cool old cadillac and i was like what cadillac he's like you know the cadillac gets stuck sticking out of the barn i was like what barn what cadillac he goes, oh, well, I took a picture of it. So he took a picture of it, and I'm like, where is this? He goes, I have no idea where it is. And then we did a little detective work, and I said, wait, can we geotag the picture? And so we, we swiped up on the picture on an iPhone, and it tells you where it is on the map. The next day, I went and visited this Cadillac. I did some investigative work on it. It's been sitting there for 43 years in the same spot. It's got 25,000 or 28,000 miles on it. It has not moved since then there it is it's a, a fleetwood and what i see is a big pickup truck with a cadillac interior that's what i see i don't see a four-door sedan there i see a cadillac pickup truck a cadillac fleetwood pickup truck and so i'm really excited to hopefully oh and then across the street on the same property is this john deere bulldozer hasn't moved the house looks abandoned and so i went online i went on the county tax map and i found the owners they live on long island they bought the house two years ago and it looks like it hasn't been worked on or fixed up so they bought the house with those cars on the lot sitting there part of the landscape and so i wrote them a note and said hey would you consider selling the cadillac sitting on the property and i'll see what they say there was no email or phone number just a, a p.o box do you have a preferred product to release old rusty bolts? Oh, my thing is still stuck. Why doesn't it go? Uh, you need to make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. When you asked to give your signature for my birthday, you said, no, I was your fun, but but I buy your book, but you are not a good person in that episode. You for the what does it say? When I asked you to give me your signature. When I asked you to give you, he asked for your autograph 
I ne- on his birthday, you said no. I never said no to anybody ever in my life. <laughs> you got to be lying. I never said no to anybody for anything in my life. And that is, ask my girlfriend. She'll tell you that. So that's got to be either a misunderstanding or a lie. Someone's probably trying to make me out to be a bad guy. I've signed every single thing. In England, I sat at Birmingham. I stood in line for seven hours signing and spray painting my logo on whoever needed it and whoever wanted it. And I appreciate it very much. So I never said no to anybody. I'm not sure where we met. You probably didn't meet me. You probably met someone that looks like me. Your name has inspired me for years. Keep up your awesome self. Cheers from Ontario. Thank you, buddy. Please don't kill the caddy. I might have to because someone's going to just throw it away. I'm going to save it for a new life. Hi, Jimmy. UK, we met at MC. You sprayed your Winter Garden shirt. Thanks for all your videos. See, I didn't say no to that gentleman. Thank you, buddy. Would you ever consider working with Machiquito Kachikuto? I would if we became friends. I don't know. Pizza oven's from Kentucky. That's love. I love the pizza oven. Do you come to visit Sweden? When this all blows over, we were planning a trip to Europe. And I was supposed to go visit Jenny Swiss right after Maker Central. And I was also supposed to go do a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, unfortunately, the world took a a pause. Um, It was great meeting you at Maker Fair in Louisville. Hope to see you there again this year. Yep, we're all set. Hopefully, you know, everything doesn't get pushed completely into the new year. Digital fabrication. I started my inspiration by you and you have 1,600 square feet faculty. Thank you for approving the free school for us. Wow, thank you very much. Yep, Cadillac pickup beds are called flower cars. Yep, used in funerals. And that's exactly what I was going to say. But I thought funeral would might be morbid in this time of uh, crisis. But that's absolutely right. I'm, it's going to look more like a funeral car, but I'm going to do some, you know, some of my touches to it to make it look a little, to make it look a little cool, like little, little like rough and tumble. <laughs> Love your work. Just came across your YouTube a couple weeks ago. Thank you so much. I got a lot. You can go way back way back like a four-door Cadillac. You can go back and see some of my really old stuff. First TV show we did was in 2002, my brother and I. That was 18 years ago. That's uh, You can find that on, on YouTube. That's called Trash to Cash. You can find that. Just Google my name and my brother John's name, and you'll find that. Somebody said, which tool would you like to be buried with? Probably my ice pick because it's the most useful tool, especially in the afterlife. You could pick locks and... You could push glasses off of tables in people's houses with it and stuff like that. How has YouTube changed you in any way? I like how you work, the type of projects. YouTube fame is great because I, now I have friends all over the world. That is the biggest thing. I can go right online right now and ask if anybody <coughs> has access to this, that, or the other thing. So it's like having an inside man everywhere in the world. That's been one of the big things. Um, uh, just uh, the friendships that have developed and – my my skill set that has gotten better and better and better is just, you know, my skill set that I believe has gotten better. The patrols probably don't believe that. But personally, my skill set has improved my ability to fabricate anything I think of, you know, within reason um, is just fantastic. And it's just so, so, so exciting. So we got five minutes and then and then I'm going to put on my tap shoes and tap dance from 12 to 1. Collaboration between yourself and Izzy would be insane. Oh, me and Izzy chat from time to time. I love Izzy. We did a little thing at Workbench Con, which I have. <clears throat> I was really the host. I, Izzy did everything. Um, Five minutes till official start. Your videos are so relaxing. And make late, every day lately much better. Thank you very much. And people keep asking me if I'm going to get involved in manufacturing parts for the hospitals. I honestly don't know if I could really make a difference. I know that sounds a little defeating, but... Um, you know, it's, uh, I'm doing what I can and what I can do, I think is, you know, lighten everyone's spirits by putting out a couple more extra videos, doing a little bit more content like this. I never, ever considered a live stream until Arbor Tech came to me and asked me to do this. And by the way, this is sponsored by Arbor Tech, not, not monetarily, but emotionally sponsored by Arbor Tech. They asked everybody to do this and we've all volunteered our time and we just really want to just make sure everybody's doing stuff and having a good time and, you know, just keeping their spirits up. And Arbitex is offering a lot of deals and discounts on their website. So go to their website. Retro Weld says hi. Oh, what's up, buddy? How you been, man? We miss you. We miss you. you. Better stop making stuff soon, bro. Hello from San Francisco. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yesterday was my birthday. I turned 28 yesterday. Go-kart build. Do so your place is probably on hold? Um, I would like to say no because it's July 4th, you know, hopefully the world is back in motion by then. 
the videos do help. Thank you, buddy. Um, Retro Weld, we love you, Douglas. Douglas, get back to work, will you? How do you modify? How did you modify your ice pick? Let me see. Do I have? Yeah, I, got, <clears throat> I showed this yesterday. This is an ice pick. It's got a level in it, and my level is fairly beat up. And I got this level tube. It's a five sixteenth level tube from plastic. I got it from McMaster Car. And then I got a, a magnet in there, a super strong magnet. This is 420 stainless, by the way. It's magnetizable. See that? Look at that strength of that. I could put this magnet on my helmet and hang from an I beam. Um, question about uh, what to do if you lose motivation to make. Or just uh, if you lose motivation, just try and do something that's in, in that will uh, invigorate you. Draw a little bit. Go down to the shop a little bit at a time. Start rearranging your drawers. You know, you really got to kickstart that. You can't just sit around and wait. I've been there. Believe me, I know what it's like, especially in these times when you find every morning you wake up and it's still a snow day. The whole world is still in a snow day and there's no snow on the ground. You really got to just like start rearranging your laundry room or just sorting through bolts or whatever. The grain doctor play the try. I don't have my trumpet here. And the, the other coronet that I had the other day, the one that's sitting right over there, it, I can't get the valves to move cleanly. I don't want to screw with it until I do a little bit more research. <clears throat> my family, everybody's good. My mom and dad are great. Um, have I ever thought about making a straight razor? Sure. Oh, oh uh, Chris Zepp is on his way here. I don't think he's going to be here before we finish, but um, he just texted me. The footage of the table saw incident in existence. No. <laughs> um, that happened just before I started doing YouTube, a year before I was doing YouTube. I could probably recreate it just for educational purposes, but I, I just was an idiot. Just I wasn't practicing safety rules, and I got hurt. And that's usually what happens when most people get hurt. They just aren't practicing the safety regulations that are really in place for a reason. When is the next knife, Jimmy? I'm supposed to work on a knife with uh, Peter Brown. I actually, Peter Brown gave me scale stuff, and the Barefoot Forge gave me a piece of metal. So I'm going to uh, do that knife. Probably it'd be the next knife I make. I was going to do it a couple weeks ago, but uh, my neck is fine. I'm wearing a. <laughs> There's a bit of a chill here, so for me, most most often I wear a neck thing like i don't need a jacket as long as my neck is is cozy and that's that's just my this is my winter garb i could wear basically just a sweatshirt and even in even if it's 19 20 degrees out as long as i have this on i'm happy i won't buy a table saw till i can afford a saw stop because of that that's really you know i i i rock a saw stop i have two saw stops they gave them to me i'm not on any salary with saw stop they basically placed them in my shop and i didn't say no but saw stop's been really kind and generous to give me two saw stops that you know several thousand dollars but um you know they there's an exchange they get some visibility on youtube but having a saw stop is it takes away the anxiety of like oh no i gotta go and try and do this risky cut or this you know i'm not saying you, you really should take chances i do but that's because i'm an idiot but the saw stop can still cause kickback and a kickback can still be just as dangerous as getting hurt by the blade itself Maybe not exactly, but you could break a finger or jam a finger or break a rib or, you know, get hit in the in the uh, the gentle spot. You could still get hurt. Somebody's asking about if you do any jewelry work. Um, so uh, some, who's, someone's texting me. Oh, parts, Dave and uh, <laughs> uh, parts and restoration. Um, do I do jewelry work? I have done jewelry work. One of my early videos is me making a, uh, a skull ring. That's right the skull ring and it was meant to be like a stamp. So you could like leave your impression on a piece of paper. If you push it really hard, that was skull ring. And uh, my sister is a jeweler. She does diamond setting and gem setting and she does platinum. Look at Kathleen DeResta on Instagram. She does lots of stuff and she does little videos. She has a business and, and a young child. And so she's her, her son, my nephew's about 13 or 14. So she really never really like found the space to make videos, but she does Instagram videos and she's, she's very, she's very, she had a very good loyal following. So go check out my sister, Kathleen DeResta on Instagram. Person, pepperoni pizza for lunch, huh? Who is that? Is that somebody we bought the pizza from yesterday? No. <laughs> um, somebody knew we had pizza yesterday. <laughs> somebody says, uh, 
I have limited space. I'm thinking about getting rid of my table saw. Could I do all of my cuts on the router bandsaw and track saw? Router bandsaw. <clears throat> router bandsaw and track saw. Track saws are great. The router bandsaw? What the hell's a router bandsaw? No, router comma bandsaw. Oh, I, we just invented the router bandsaw. I think we just invented it. Yeah. That would be pretty tricky. I, don't know, um, I, would, say, I would say that if, if you want to get rid of the table saw, you could. You just have to get your plywood broke down at, at, at yeah. the uh, store that you buy it from. Yeah, if you have a small car, you can't actually carry a, a sheet of plywood. That's a problem. But a track saw will get you really far. I mean, the track saw, a good track saw from – one of the, the companies that make track saws. I don't support any one of them, but I think it'll be really important. I'm going to ask the audience on a whole as a question. I'll wait till the, uh, till, till the attendance gets a little bit higher, but remind me to ask a question about tool companies. I want to ask everybody a question about tool companies. So it's new note three. So yeah, we're officially starting. Oh, so we're officially started right now. Um, so I want to, uh, Hey, Troy, if you're watching, my phone is free. So you could send me a text. Just let me know who I have to pitch for the, uh, uh, for the outro. Uh oh, it might be Austin. Austin, is that Austin? I think that's Austin. Uh, oh, it's Rob Rojas. Welcome. Welcome to the live stream, Rob Rojas. TOT's in the chat, dude. <gasps> Where is TOT? Where is he? Where is he? Oh my God, live the rest to pinch me. Oh my God, this old Tony. I'm so flattered that this old Tony is in the house. Oh my God. This old Tony. How you doing, Rob Rojas? Rob's the new shop hangout. He's got to watch the motorcycles in front and make sure no one sits on them. <laughs> he's not, yeah, he's not that's, even a probie yet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a motorcycle gang joke. Um, you, God, thank you very much. But there's a lot of people that are better than me. I appreciate that, though. Um, have you heard of Swag Offroad? Yes, I know Swag Offroad. Are you working for Swag Offroad? Because Swag Offroad has given me some cool free stuff that I've used and chatted out. A funny, uh, a funny story about Swag Offroad. My friend Ryan, who may, may or may not show up, Ryan lives in the neighborhood. Ryan worked with Swag Offroad, and they, uh, well, he he ordered something from them, and it was too expensive, so he dropped my name without telling me. He's like, "Hey, I work in Jimmy Duresta's shop. Maybe you guys can give me a discount." And the guys at Swag Offroad acquiesced and gave him a discount on a on a roller, and uh, a bandsaw table, and they actually sent me a bandsaw table with my name in it, and I shouted it out in a vlog. So Swag Offroad, if anybody is in the chat from Swag Offroad, thank you very much for that. And we never officially had anything going on, but that doesn't mean we can't. So thank you, guys. John from Arbor, Texas, nice hat. Isn't this nice? Somebody left this in my shop. I found it cleaning up the big barn yesterday. It was in the big dust bunnies on the ground. <laughs> what, is the, what is the New York like makers? Does the area dictate what you make? That's a good question. I'm out here rurally and... <clears throat> If you guys go back and look at my channel from the beginning of time where I worked in my shop, so I did small things that fit on the bench. And then obviously over time, I, I've always, by the way, I always own my house upstate. A lot of people have this misconception that I got my house because I made money on YouTube. I always had my house upstate before I did YouTube. and But because of YouTube, I was able to work less in local restaurants and interior design jobs and work more wherever I was. So I went from basically doing like on all the time jobs for restaurants locally. That's why I never left the city because every job was like right a mile away from my shop. So because of that, uh, YouTube got me, basically created freedom for me. And so I was able to come up here. And because of that, long answer is that I can collect big machines. So yeah, having space and and a little bit more time, less client work gave me the ability to jump into restoring antique machines and running around and buying heavy stuff that I probably shouldn't be buying. So my life has changed because of my environment. Absolutely. Not necessarily because, you know, I'm in the woods, but that's part of it. I had space to build my new big barn that uh, was built by uh, Kyle from RR Builders. And uh, you can go watch the whole video series when Kyle did the first phase and then Dave uh, Paraguay from uh, the Mexican woodworker, he did the, the second phase or PC Woodworks on Instagram. And some people were asking yesterday and somebody's asking again today, you got any projects with uh, Nick Offerman planned? Are you friends with Nick Offerman? Oh, uh, yeah. Nick and I have been chatting a little bit. You know, we, we've been going back and forth with some of the challenges uh, for the next episode of making it for the next series of making it would be season three. And but unfortunately, everything just came to a screeching halt in March. And uh, I'm sure Nick is just taking care of his family and his personal stuff. But um, 
Oh, I just got an email that said you're live on YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> From YouTube. Favorite tool? Somebody's asking. Uh, my favorite tool, of course, is the band. So I'm like, you know. Actually, you guys also might be excited to know that uh, I've been texting with Alex Snodgrass. He's the guy who does Carter Guides, Guards, Carter, Carter, Carter Guards, Guides, Guards, Guides, Guards, Guides, Carter Guides for the bandsaw. And he's the guy who does the little deer all the time. He does the quick little bandsaw of a deer with antlers. So um, Alex and I have been, off. we're going to, he, he said, he goes, let's do something. Let's do a live stream. So we're going to do a bandsaw live stream somehow, some way later in this month. I think we, we picked somewhere around April 20th. So um, for a platform like this, we would never witness such creativity, inspiring people, moments captured forever. We are blessed. I agree. I mean, when people keep asking me, what is your greatest accomplishment? I, I say my YouTube channel because it's not going anywhere. You know, I have all these videos on hard drives. We could re-upload them somewhere else in the future. And like I said, I always joke about this. I, this is, I invented this. So if anybody thinks of it, I get the patent. Um, I want like a toaster oven where you could stick a hard drive in and the toaster oven has its own computer screen. And then it says, okay, where do you want all this content to be put next? So no plugs, no 12 volt converters, none of that BS. You just take a hard drive and you stick it in a microwave and the microwave reads the mind of the hard drive. Put that, put that in the books. That's mine. Tony, work on that. Let's see. Hi, Super Jimmy. What food, what food knife are you using? The food knife that I use, actually, well, the other day Taylor made zucchini bread and we, we cut it with this. So it's still a little greasy, but... I use this typically, and then if you guys look in my my Instagram, if you look at my Instagram, there's uh, a little story. I made this giant 14-inch chef knife, which is a copy of a, a knife that we bought at a garage sale, and uh, the knife at the garage sale is, is like pristine antique. I couldn't mess with it, so I just used its silhouette and made a new one. That's a big-ass chef's knife, like a big French. I forget the name of it. Everyone keeps telling me the name of it. Where can COVID is over? Will you travel first? Uh, probably New York City. Go make sure Willie's okay. Um, you should have passed prerequisite quiz to enter the chat so people stop asking the same questions over and over. It's okay, you know. Like I do a post, I'll do a post, and I'll see that it gets like you know, a hundred people notice it. That doesn't mean because I said it there that everybody knows. So you say the same things over. Try and keep them interesting each time. It's okay. Bonjour. Rogue Molière. Molière. Will the dream shop ever become the main shop? Probably not. The dream shop, we're clearing it out right now because it got messy throughout the classes last year and we're getting ready to do the walls because now we finally put in the uh, mooring. That'll be the second floor. The dream shop, I basically, I mean, unless all goes to hell and it becomes Mad Max, the dream shop will be become the center of operations because it might be too dangerous to leave the house to come three miles down the road. People are going to probably rob me for my gasoline. But until that happens, the dream shop, I'm going to kind of keep somewhat empty and use it. I'm going to have this upcoming video where I'm going to be using the new lathe we got is going to be in that shop. So I'm going to shoot in there. I want to keep it kind of more for a soundstage or when we build the, the rat rod flower car. You know, I want to have it some empty for some space. What is your academic qualification? Just, just Would you like to see my ID? <laughs> What is your School academic? Hard knocks, baby. What is your academic qualifications? Tinkering. I have a a, a BA and MA, and I'm a BMF besides uh, in tinkering. <laughs> HMFIC. Yeah, that is a fifty year old Cheech and Chong joke. I think one. I see one person laughing in the comment section. <laughs> the official pizza oven uploader. Uploader. It? It's Dave, man. <laughs> can you make a steak we made actually patrick made a steak on the barbecue you know my barbecue with the wheels that raises up and down we have a company maybe interested i don't know these Great. things never go anywhere i'm just happy to do the video and that's it everybody wants to make products out of all my stuff they say have at it let me know when the check's coming uh how old were you when you did your first project do you remember yeah, I was about six or seven years old. I have this. I talk about it before. So if you didn't pass the qualification and the qu the quiz getting into this chat, I'm going to have to repeat myself. Uh, when I was about seven or eight years old, me and my dad, I did a project on the jigsaw. Or what we call it the jigsaw. Now it's called the scroll saw. And <clears throat> Bob bitchin', bitchin'. Bitchin' Bob. <laughs> That's another Cheech and Chong joke. Bitchin' Bob. Um, 
<laughs> I'm just reading. I'm about like, I made a, a seahorse. It, it's way back. It's way back in my Instagram. I made a seahorse when I was a kid, and I used the Sears rotary tool, which is basically like a Dremel, and I scalloped out all this texture on the front of it. Then we burned it with a torch, and I wire brushed it, and it softened all the corners. That was one of the first things I mean. TOT says, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy, I have a question. How much does a Series 1 Bridgeport M head with a 32-inch table weigh, and what's the square root of that number? Well, that 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 act, the actual weight of that is uh, 1,625 pounds. That would be 737 kilos. If and the square root would be 40.3 pounds. And if you're working in metric, that would be 18.4 kilos. So do the math on that. Check me. Any other questions? So uh, let's see. Good job, man. Your works are cool. I thought I was the only one who couldn't write a sentence. That's I'm like very, very happy to see nobody knows how to write. Not just me. Uh, what's the name of the screw that you use with the square drive? Uh, Robertson screws. It was invented in Canada. I think it's a Canadian product. And I started, I saw, I guess I saw John Highs using it first. And, uh, well, of course I've seen them, but when I saw John Highs talking about him specifically and, um, and Matthias talking about him specifically, I talked about him on a podcast because I really believe the Phillips head screw is like totally garbage. All the companies that make Phillips head drivers and Phillips head screws, there's something about the angle of incidence, the way the, the, the screw is obviously designed to slide out of it. Now it's just designed to slide out of it before it even puts the screw in. I think that it might be a mill. Tony, can we, can we fix this problem now? Can you do a deep dive on Phillips head screws while they don't work anymore? Well, it's I, because most people are using the wrong. You got to use a number two Phillips. With no, the number two I understand. Screw. But when I was a kid and I first learned how to use a screw gun when I was about 10, 12, 14, 15, doing construction with my dad, a screw gun tip would last in a screw for a week. Right. Now you get like 20 before you got to put another screw gun tip in. Half the time you bottom out a screw and the tip just explodes. It breaks completely apart. Uh, they don't even go. They don't even go dull anymore. They just break off like a fin breaks off. Any collaborations with uh, Brad Leone? Uh, Brad and I chat all the time. He's such a fun, positive, sweet guy. He shouted me out on Instagram last night. He was going through his drawers in his workshop, and he uh, he tagged me. Brad's awesome. We always chat about potentially doing something. I hooked him up with Weaver Leather. I don't know if that's all on hold, but he was going to go to Weaver Leather and make a, a an apron and, a, and a, a knife roll with the guys in Ohio. So I don't know if that happened. But uh, Brad's just a good dude. I, I When he came up here, he said he – he said he's been contemplating getting a farm. So I showed him around. I was like twisting his arm. I, I brought him to 20 farms to buy. <laughs> he's sick of me by the end of the day. Have you ever made anything with an ads? An ads uh, yeah, I, I have. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I never really had a chance to use an ads. Like I never built like a Viking ship or anything. But um, I guess this summer at the uh, the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp, we are going to do uh, Justin Dietrich and Patrick Reynolds and uh, a couple of guys and probably uh, Rounders are going to build a, uh, a post and beam cabin. And so I'm sure we have an ad. I have a few. I just never use them for anything. I use them to scratch the, the chicken poop off my deck. Grain doctor. What's up, buddy? How, how are you inspired to, to woodwork? That's from grain doctor's daughter. Um, you know, it's, it's like, I, I say this example all the time when you see like, you see someone like Steven Tyler, he was born to be a the lead singer of a rock band. That's all he was ever. He was bred for that. Like that's like a racehorse. He was bred to be the lead singer of a rock band. And I'm not saying I'm a rock art, a rock star, but I feel like I was born to make things. And some of that is woodwork and some of that is metalwork and some, but I feel that's, that was my purpose. You know, I'm not, I'm not a big fan on past lies or any of that stuff, but ever since the minute I was old enough to tinker, that's just all I, things so i feel like i might have been predetermined to do this i don't know how ha how has this platform changed your life i'm assuming they're talking about youtube and social media in general. social media i wish it would have came when i was in my 20s you know i didn't really i started acting like a teenager when i was 43 so i'm 53 now so 10 years ago is when i really got on youtube and started really paying close attention to it and like i guess in all honesty like my first videos were 2012 20 13 that's when i really started like hitting it hard i had done tv up until that point and that was really what i was banking on trying to get some success on tv but with youtube and being able to come up with a you know on the whim of an idea 
Oh, let me make this. I don't have to talk to TV producers. You know what? Let me reinvigorate a wrench. I'm talking for Andrew. If I brought this concept up to a TV producer, they'd be like, yeah, but it's just a book. It's like, can we blow it up? Can we figure out how to shoot it? Can we throw it? It's just a book. So my life changed in the fact that the nuanced building techniques that I can show on a YouTube channel where people can get actual general learning and not just passing time while they eat their McDonald's sitting on the couch is, is, has changed my life in the way that I feel acknowledged and honored because what I do is, is not just, you know, some chat room people discussing how I did it wrong. It's people asking me specific questions and, you know, so the world of TV, um, you know, going from TV to, to YouTube is just, it's better. Um, and then somebody's asking again about, um, struggles with, um, learning differently and things like that. Well, it's funny. I, I personally, I learn by doing, I, 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 can't read instructions. Aaron will tell you everything we unpack. I usually just like, I throw away the box and the instructions are still <laughs> stuck in the bottom of the box. And Aaron's like, wait, 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 I need those. Um, I, 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 I'm not good at reading. I don't enjoy reading. I, it's to me, it's, 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 it's like climbing up. It's like climbing up a rock hill with, I don't know, with underwear on. I don't know what to say. I hate reading. I do read because I have to, and I could read really well out loud. Whenever I was chosen in school to read out loud, I could read really well like a radio announcer, but I just can't stand it. To me, I feel like I'm wasting all the time in the world sitting there trying to suck in knowledge when it could be put in my head. I don't have to actually take it and put it in my head. I could listen to books on tape, and that's what I do. So what was the original question? That's okay. You're fine. Uh, how, many, <laughs> how many former shop assistants are buried on your property? Uh, well, I had Keith years ago. Keith – um Keith now is a, he paints in his own shop in, in Queens, uh, Keith McAlpine. Keith was uh, when I was in the toy business. Then from Keith, I, I guess, uh, I guess Dave was next. And then from Dave, I had uh, Brett, who now is in California. And now I have Aaron. So just four, that's it, in all my time. Any uh, projects you'd like to go back and uh, redo now that you have new skills? Um, yeah, it is funny. You know, I think of some of the projects that I could have used with a CNC machine, and I wonder if I could recreate them. But I don't know. I just keep moving forward. I, there's a couple of things that are going to get rehashed in the coming year only because I thought of a better way of doing them, you know, or a better outcome or a better design. When you look through my notebook, <clears throat> I can show you. Since I made this notebook, I want to, it's my goal to fill it with, with ideas. So you could see upcoming, I want to do like a, a, a speaking of Arbor Tech, I want to do an Arbor Tech chair where it's, and this is a rotten molar chair. So like this would be a big cavity chair. It's like a molar, but it's got a big rotten spot in it. And that's what you sit in. And <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a, a set of stools this, this month. There's going to be all lathe work. You know what's so funny? I get these every day. I just got another one. Just you heard the bing. Um, a buddy of mine needs a box to put something special that he doesn't want his kids to get at in. So he said, can you come up with an interesting way? So this is just a simple version it's like a box within a box within a box and you put your uh your weed in there so that's something i might do um and there were some questions about this yesterday and they're asking me the other day any uh what the, any ideas about the projects for the injection molder uh yeah actually it's funny i i, I didn't approach a couple people right away said make an anvil which i thought was a good idea and then i think unknowingly cliff dufton I haven't even talked to him about this yet. Cliff is sending me little uh, STL files of, of anvils to print. And I printed a couple of them the other night, 3D printed. And I was going to ask him if I could take one and maybe make the uh, maybe make an injection molded anvil keychain. This old Tony and, wants to know, what's a group of flamingos called? A flamboyance. Who doesn't know that? <laughs> Come on, Tony. What's up, man? Flamboyance. Um, what I might do, and, uh, and, and now I'm, I'm surprising Cliff with this announcement. This is my mind just works behind the scenes, and I just assume everyone's going to be okay with it. I, I might steal one of Cliff's uh, little anvils and see if I can put Andrew Blacksmith Tools names on it, or maybe the Fits All podcast. So it'll be just like a little anvil keychain. We'll put a little eyelet on it, and it'll just be an injection molded keychain that's in the shape of an anvil with a little branding on it. Do you know Jimbo's Garage? I know Jimbo. We met. I, got, I know Jimbo. Jimbo's a good dude. It's got a great channel. It's a family effort over there. It's great. Uh, what else? So no. Sketching. Does sketching come natural? Do you work on it? <clears throat> sketching. Uh, yeah. 
sketching. I I learned how to sketch since I was a kid. And you know, look to some projects, an old outhouse. I'm going to make an outhouse eventually. Talking about privacy screens, Taylor and I were coming up with some ideas from old. We're using privacy screens for old windows. And uh, again, you guys saw this. This was the tab. This was in the video with the tabs. But you see, sometimes I sketch really clumsily. I don't really. It's like I might be sitting in a car and I sketch clumsily. Other times I sketch more accurately because I got more time. I might be. I might be sitting alone at a dinner table or something. So, what else I got? Oh, here's an idea. This is how you see, like how I think when this is. I'll do this when I'm on an airplane when I have no option but to. I'm tinkering. This is my sketchy tinker. This is an idea where a knife flips out. One side is a razor blade, and it flips right on this pivot, and the other side is a knife. So it's always a, it's either a razor blade stuck out or or a blade. So this is the stupid idea. I'll probably never make it. What else? What else? What else? Oh, this is something I want to make. Here's an here's an Izzy thought. This is we could see that's the the hammer that I made in a video recently. This is an idea for an Izzy project. I was going to try and use the bandsaw blade on my big giant bandsaw as a as a lathe tool, and I could put a spindle and spin it, and slide that on the table. And spin it with a drill, and then here, this is like a, a Game of Thrones fire basket for the uh, for the blacksmith festival. We'll have. This is a sketch. These are my scissors. A sketch for my scissors. And I, no matter how many times I draw knives, I always draw knives with a straight back. I like a knife with a perfectly straight back. And when I do cooking, which isn't all that much, but I do cook sometimes, I'll chop, 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 and I flip the knife over and I use the back as the sweep off like if I cut onions or garlic or something. So I like having that back perfectly flat. So that's that's kind of a trademark of the knives that I make is always having a flat back. Oh, Izzy's on deck too. Izzy's in here too. Um, and then any trades you would like to learn, which was a question we had yesterday too. I want to get into, uh, I, want to, I want to make scissors again. Watch this. I got to do this just because to me, I'm so impressed that I was able to figure this out. Ah, put that in your pipe and smoke. Is he a Karambit knife? Oh, is he, yeah, is he did a Karambit, right? I remember that. It was a few weeks, like about a year ago. And then, is, he, uh, is he JP Woodworks in the house? So this guy keeps asking about uh, how did you make the modification of the ice pick? I don't know exactly what he means other than drill a hole in it and put a magnet in it. How did I make it? I, Well, I could just do a quick explanation. I did an Instagram story on it. I drilled the hole in the end with a 5 16th bit, and then I held it in the in the lathe. I held it in the in the vise on the bridge port, and then I just passed a uh, – I passed an end mill, I, obviously an end mill with a bull nose on it. So I passed the end mill through, and I, I was able to get into that hole. So I was able to cut into that hole, and that's how I created the window. And then I took the a little bit of epoxy, and then I slid the level – vial inside put a gob of epoxy and then i took the same size magnet and slid it in the end and then this this modification is done well that's obviously just a um a knurling but this is an interesting knurling tool hang on i'll show you i'll get i'll get the knurling tool don't go anywhere <laughs> did you just fucking do dead air sorry i said a bad word all right i'm going over Hi guys, I'm not Jimmy. I'm Aaron. Um, meanwhile, Jimmy's running around the shop instead of just sending me to go get the thing. So, uh, in the chat, I'm doing my best to answer your questions. I'm not a mod, so I can't block or get rid of any bots or anything like that. Do me a favor. Let's try to keep things on topic and away from politics and stuff like that, so we don't confuse the chat with questions that just aren't going to get answered. Thanks. Thank you. So, this is uh, a tool. And I don't know if Brett's watching. I doubt it. But this is a tool that Brett found at an auction nearby. And he came back and he goes, there's something there. He goes, I don't know what it is, but I know you want it. <laughs> so I went back over to the auction and I came and I ended up winning this. This is an amazing. First told me about this. This is a Wade. It's a, a Wade. Uh, oh, my God. What is this thing called? A knurler. 
it, right. it's a bump knurler or a pinch knurler? Uh, uh, you got a pinch, that's a pinch knurler. An African pinch knurler or a South African pinch knurler? <laughs> African or European? <laughs> Wait, I'm not sure. Ah, ah. So here, look, it goes like this. I don't know if it's going to knurl this, but we'll try it. I feel like Adam Savage right now is showing you one of my favorite tools. As I'm turning it, I'm tightening this, I'm tightening this. And you go like that. And then if you could push and pull on it, either on like while you're pulling and pushing it on a, on a lathe mandrel or with a drill. So it's not going to work great because I'm not pushing it that hard. But you could see how the knurling begins. And that's exactly how I did this. In fact, let me see. There's uh, nowhere on here to do another one. At some point, uh, just because it keeps getting repeated by different by different people, mm -hmm. um, projects involving basic tools. I know you do a bunch of them already. Um, I'm going to put a knurl right on the end of this. See that? I'm going to put a knurl right on the end of this ring. Let's see if I could do that. Book ahead, I'm listening. But no, maybe at some point talk about um, how you balance videos between uh, basic tools and more advanced tools and what why you pick certain tools for which? Um, well, you know, a lot of times I'll pick a project because it's something I want to learn. So if I want to, like, for instance, the finger jointed thing, I could have stood there on the bandsaw for all those guys that go, yeah, but I want to see do it without a CNC tool. And I would have bandsawed for four days, those finger joints, and they would have came out just as perfect as if I used the, the CNC. And then everybody would have been like, okay, big whoop, so you know how to use a bandsaw. So instead, I cut them on the CNC because it was the right thing to do. In fact, the sample that I made, I showed this yesterday when I was experimenting with the finger joint concept, I bandsawed them. And it was super noisy and super boring. But if I could show flames and slow-mo and exciting stuff. So I make a decision based on kind of the cinematography of whatever it is, if you can call that cinematography, versus the monotony of watching me at the bandsaw for two days which I would make into 13 seconds. I'm still, I'm doing this and then I'm tightening it. I can't get a full revolution. So it's going to be a weird looking thing. But let's see what it looks like. Let's see. Uh, so there you go. Look at that. Thank you. Right. So now when I reach in, by the way, this, there's one of my scars that people don't know. When I was a teenager, I fell on glass. I cut half my fingertip off on glass. Want to do scars? Let's see, I'll show you my scars. Here's my pinky scar. When you're a kid, you go like this and you take your thumb off. You can do that with my pinky. It's my pinky scar. When I was a kid, I was taking apart a car door. And when the I was pulling a, a cotter pin, and when the cotter pin slipped to take the handle off, my hand slipped, and I cut a huge gash in the back of my hand on the edge of open sheet metal. That happened when I was about 15, this scar right here. Uh, somebody asked, uh, have you ever considered doing a real-time version of the projects or a slow version? I can re-edit all my videos into slow. I have most, most of my edits. I still have them all preparation to maybe export in slow, but... That's like investing time in watching a bean plant grow, I think. Um, I don't know. I, would I put them in slow? I, you know, Lately, I've been stretching the videos out a little bit. I don't know if anybody notices it. Instead of going like four and five and six times fast, I kind of slowed down a little bit just to stretch out the time so the videos are a little bit longer. And then sometimes techniques are kind of get lost in the speed, so I've been trying to show them a little bit more. Flamboyance. Just know what a flamboyance is. Uh, what time is it? It is twelve thirty-one in America, oh. East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you download all your videos direct from YouTube? I think you can. You can. There's, 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 there's apps where you could hack it. You could do it. You know, unorthodox. I don't care if you do that. My name's in everything, so it don't matter. Let's see. Uh, do you still have the skull belt buckle? I do. It's it's in my kitchen in New York City. It's right, hanging on the wall. I have everything. What I'm going to do um, once the uh, coronavirus decides to secede, I'm going to uh, we're going to work on the the golf the the mini golf and the uh, go kart track, the main building. Actually, Aaron, I'm thinking about starting the double doors. I have these antique wow. brownstone double doors that we bought at a garage sale years ago. I'm going to make those double doors the doors to the the new building across the street, and we're going to make it look like a Cracker Barrel. 
it's going to be all like rough cut lumber and it's going to be uh look like like an old western little thing and then of course the printing presses will be in there most of them and then uh it's going to be also memorabilia for all my stuff so all my stuff's going to be screwed to the wall like you're in uh tchotchkes from the, the tv show office space all my tchotchkes will be in there some of my experiments some of my favorite tools Oh, I got an email from I got a text message from um, Doug. Talk about 3D printing at some point. Let's see that picture of you on the wall. <laughs> Doug wants to see. Um, uh, this one, Doug? This one? The one of me and my family? Because there's another one up there. That's, this creepy one where I look like a vampire is up on the wall. Everybody likes that. Oh, yeah. This is... Uh, I think that's stuck on the wall. I don't want to break it and peel it. Well, you know, we'll take a picture of it. Take a picture of it with my phone. Yeah. yeah do that. Yeah, it's like it's like newspaper. Yeah, take a picture of it with my phone. So this is a picture of me and my siblings. This is my sister. That's me. I was missing my front tooth for years because I was always accident prone. You know, it's, it's not even a joke. I, obviously, everyone knows that how accident prone I am now. But when I was a kid, watch. Oop, I can't zoom in. When I was a kid... I was hanging on the front door, like both hands on either side of a doorknob of a door, swinging back and forth. And then my left hand slipped and my body spun and I went face down into the gravel driveway and broke my front tooth. Not only did I break it, actually, it, it got broken with a rock jam between my front teeth. So when I went to the dentist to pull the rock out that was jammed between my front teeth, he had to pull this tooth completely out. So it was because it was my first set of teeth. So as a kid, all the early pictures of me, I'm missing my front tooth. And that's my brother Joseph, and that's John. And this picture was must have been taken in like 1976. In 76, I was nine years old. 76, yeah, 75, 76. Uh, and then this is the other picture. This is when I was. Uh, this is when I was. Uh, I thought it was Nick Cave. In this picture, I'm 25 years old. Jackman says. Do you like to make stuff or is that just Bob? I don't like to make anything. Bob just likes to make stuff. I like the Jackman stuff. This little box comes here. Look at this Wade toolbox. If anybody sees one of these in their grandfather's basement, make sure you send it to me. Are you going to be doing anything with Chuck and Weaver Leather? Uh, Chuck and I did a video together. It's on their site. And when this all clears up, Chuck and I, I'm sure we'll work together. Me and Chuck had fun. Talk about opposite workflows because Chuck is very, very, very specific about his shooting. And me, I'm obviously more free flowy. So it was a, it was a little bit of like, you know, the chipmunks that are super too nice to each other. It's like, oh, no, no. Oh, no, you go. Oh, no, no, you go. No, you go. We were trying not to. But we after a day of working together, we, we, we found our flow. But Chuck is awesome. And, of course, he's so knowledgeable. So if anybody wants to know anything about leather work, go to the Weaver channel and check out Chuck. Chuck Dorsett. He's He's amazing, and his work is unbelievable. He had this uh, this samurai shogun leather thing he had when we were oh, working right. together. Unbelievable. His holsters, he does these old Western holsters. There's some uh, random more uh, machine shop questions. Um, how do you organize a small workshop? Uh, differences between imperial or metric? Uh, do you ever do any metal spinning? So that's like three questions. Say it again, I wasn't listening. Sure. Uh, <laughs> How do you feel about imperial versus metric? That's a lame question. Um, oh yeah, well you know, let me let me talk about that for a second. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Sometimes metrics easy. Sometimes imperial is easy. Uh, you know, you design, yeah. there are, there are other channels that like downplay metric. And it's it's ridiculous. This is the world we live in. Sometimes it's metric. Sometimes it's not metric. And that's the bottom line. Actually, metric is technically easier, but we're just used to one system over here, and that's what we do. I actually the, the real the real system that everybody should convert to is tenths of an inch, thousandths of an inch. That's that's the real system we should all live by, because that makes life super easy. Alex Steel collaboration. Alec and I made a hammer together, which is one of the, the blacksmith hammers I use most often. Alec is just unbelievable. He's just a, an incredible ball of energy. And his new his like the new phase of his life with Will is, is fantastic. I've been watching. Alec, Alec is just a, he's an incredible inspiration to so many people. The content, the amount of content, the quality of the content, he's just unbelievable. You know, every once in a while, you have an outlier, someone like him that's probably lived 10 lives. And, you know, it just comes out the minute he's born. So he's he's fantastic. And then uh, metal spinning. 
Metal spinning. Um, I've done metal spinning. I made a little a little bell for one of my dog houses that I built many years ago, probably seven or eight years ago. So Google metal spinning in Duresta in in YouTube. You should be able to find it. I stretched it too far and it ripped, but I recovered. I made a little bezel for the bell. Actually, we're going to do a metal casting bell. That's something we keep talking about doing. I'm looking for a good sponsor to maybe do it with. I'm not sure. I might just do it on my own. I don't know. But wait around for sponsors. We're all going to get old and gray. Um, especially I got, uh, how do you choose an old machine if we found stuff that you may we think you're interested in what's the best way to let you know i said instagram you get into well instagram filters and everything you can email it to me my email is jimmy at mac.com j-i-m-m-y-d-i-r-e-s-t-a at m-a-c.com i get hundreds of emails every day and i look through most of them a lot of them is just advertising stuff i get my 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 email is so used and abused it's on every every sales list in the entire globe i get every day i get I, so when i open my email i'm just like <laughs> that's me just throwing stuff away oh oh cool oh cool throw it, throw it. anyway looking looking good live thank you dave from parts and restoration always wondered was the ice pick made out of necessity for self-defense in new york city knife etc actually dave that's a really good question and I'm going to be 100% honest. In uh, 2006, I split up with a long-term girlfriend, and I moved to a very, very shady part of town. And uh, you can't carry a handgun in New York. You can't carry a rifle in New York. It's purely it's five years in jail mandatory. So you can't carry a gun. Um, so if I ever felt myself in a tussle, I figured the easiest, quickest thing would be to poke somebody with a needle because nobody wants to get poked with a needle. So... I was feeling threatened by some of my local street kids that were, they thought I was a cop because I was new to the neighborhood and they just assumed I was a New York city cop and that I was undercover there planted in the neighborhood. So I'd walk by them and they'd both be like, yo, what's up copper? Yeah. You think we don't know who you are? <laughs> this is a true story. This is in 2006. And, uh, I felt very nervous cause I was, I was actually during when I was working on the TV show. So I'd leave Brooklyn on my motorcycle and come back to, to the lower East side and, uh, at like, you know, sometimes three in the morning and they'd all be out there. You know, it was like, it was like the movie defiance with Jan Michael Vincent. I felt like Jan Michael Vincent in that movie. You remember that movie? I always thought of like, oh, I'm like Jan Michael Vincent. I just wish I could turn these kids around, give up the drugs. No. So instead I made an ice pick and I'll show you, this is the first ice pick I used to carry. So this I made for self-defense. I used to keep it up my sleeve. I get off my motorcycle. I keep it up my sleeve and, uh, it's a little big. And then some people. And Taylor, it used to have a perfectly round back, and Taylor started using it to do leather work. So she mashed it with a hammer, which I don't care. Nope. Nice. I made this on my South Bend lathe. And then I started, I found, let's just throw it in the table. And then I started making them from stock, from just round stock. That was obviously a one inch stock. It's too heavy. And then I started making them. And then as I became involved in the maker community and doing maker stuff, I found every time I'm lathing, I needed the ice pick. I used to actually carry an ice pick like this, and I would have it through my jeans. I'd have it like – I can't show how I can demonstrate it here. I used to have it go like in my jeans and out my jeans. So it would be like this on the side of my pants. And then in time, I came up with the idea to keep it directly in my pocket inside of a sheath. And then the ring was so that I could grab it quickly – but everybody would be like, what are you grabbing it quickly from the wrong direction? You could get shot in that amount of time. So and then I just started carrying it upside down in my pocket. So um, I don't know. So now it's used more for utility than death. So thank you. Good question, Dave. Good question. If somebody has something for your mailbag, where should they send it to? Uh, my P.O. Box is P.O. Box 20270, New York City, New York, 10009. 20270? Yeah, 20270. <gasps> What's up, bro? Yeah. We have a new visitor. 20270 what? Protected by Viper. Stand back. What? 20270 what? 20270, New York City, New York. I stole that from. Oh, cool. 20270. P.O. Box 20270, New York City, New York, 10009. 10009. Mm -hmm. Got it. Let's see. Chris Zapp. I want to drop off a bar, and but I don't want to contaminate you guys. I can unload it myself with the chain hoist. Come to the, come to the, where are we? We're at the warehouse. 
I got so many little spots that we work at. We got the machine shop, the black barn, and the warehouse. That's what we call everything. And then soon we'll be working out of the racetrack. Oh, Austin from from the Blackthorn, aka the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp, is going to be heading over here in a minute. Ben in Texas. The rest of the calls, do you have any more of those? <laughs> I wish I could play the trumpet, Nick. Nick, I just checked Nick's text. I don't. I don't have my trumpet with me. It's at the house. Do I have what? The rest of the dolls. The rest of the dolls. There's one right there. I do have a couple left over, and I'm sure there are people in the in the world who never got theirs because of customs problems and stuff. And I deeply apologize. And if I could make it up to any of you people at one point, please write me an email. Um, I guess here's something that you could try to answer. Um, because this one guy's asking, he's asked it a couple of times, is YouTube how you make your money? But I think a better question would be along the lines of like, as an independent maker, how do you monetize what yeah. you do? Uh, as an independent maker, I make money several ways. And uh, I never really count the ways. April is really good at like knowing exactly where every one of her pennies comes from. I'm just, I'm a little bit lazy in that regard. But um, you really, it's in this world, I have my income from my website. That's one. I have income from, from fabrication work, that's two, and that's always kind of moving along slowly. I have income from AdSense, that's three. I have income from advertisers and deals that I make where I constantly use products in my channel, that's four. I have, uh, you know, like steady products. Well, my website, I said, but I mean, my ice pick is, is like a category on its own because the ice pick is always selling. Um, it's just, you never know, especially you, you got to really put yourself out there. By putting yourself out there in this community, Every one of our brand deals between me and other YouTubers, every one of our brand deals are exclusively different, you know, uh, and, and there's no, there's no animosity because everybody has, it's like a little bit of a racehorse. It's like, you know, if somebody has less ratings than me, then they just might not get paid as much. And, you know, everybody knows that as their ratings go up their their fee goes up. So it's everybody's, everybody's at one point on the path to, you know, getting more and more income. Here's one. Uh, if you could collaborate with any deceased inventor or maker from history, who would it be and why? Salvador Dali and Thomas Edison. Next question. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. If I can get Salvador Dali and Thomas Edison in the same room, it would be funny to see. Actually, I recently watched Salvador Dali on a Dick Cavett interview, and he came on with a lizard. And I was a little annoyed. I'm like, Come on, bro. Let's still make this shit all about you. I know this interview is about you, but he brought a lizard on a leash. And the interview went nowhere because everybody in the old Dick Cavett show, they'd have everybody sitting around in the chairs. And it's all about this fucking lizard. It's like, come on, bro. Like, let's get into what, you know, people want to know who you are and what you're doing. Like, like if I, right now, I was playing with a lizard the, this entire time. Like, it wouldn't be about, like, people needing to know things about me and, you know, what it is that inspires them about me. It would be about the lizard. So I was, I lost about 1% of respect for Salvador Dali bringing on a lizard on the Dick Cavett show in 1975. But uh, Thomas Edison was the type of guy who just constantly was probably looking for solutions and, you know, he probably couldn't turn it off. So it'd be interesting to spend some time with him. And then Leonardo da Vinci, I think we'd have a language problem. So imagine that. It's getting like, Dream come true. You get to hang out with Leonardo da Vinci, but you can't speak. Are you guys going to be doing another live stream with making it? I would like to. I think that went really well. Me, Bob, and Dave uh, had a really good time. And we'll see. You know, how, how, like we're all held up in home. So however long this thing continues to take place, we'll see if we do that again. Um, motorcycles, do you have them? I have a Harley. I have a 19, I have a 2003 Harley Davidson Lowrider, which has been modified to a 105 inch. I don't really ride motorcycles anymore because I'm just afraid if I get injured, it's going to be a, a life altering injury because I can't afford even having like a broken finger or, or, you know, uh, you know, the freedom is nice. I rode my motorcycle all the time around Manhattan. I felt like a badass pulling up to a job on a Harley and then leaving on my Harley and spinning rubber and being all cool and macho and hanging out with the crew on third street. But it is, uh, you know, a, a life altering accidents happen on motorcycles all the time and it's a nice object to play with and maybe just tool around the property but i'm not going for any long haul rides on my motorcycles anymore i also have a honda 650 xlr dirt bike which is like the size of a horse which is fun to ride and right here looking across the room i have a, a honda cb 450 a 1970 
Honda CB450 that I got for Taylor so we could dismantle it and, and work on it together. So it's been too cold. So now that it's 15 minutes, 15 uh, minutes ago, somebody wants to hear the troll voice, of course. That's me doing Jocko doing the troll voice. Plug the, plug the website too. Do or your, do your web store. Do 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 My personal web store is jimmyderesta.com. You could find everything on there. But uh, don't forget, this is Arbor Tech's hosting this event. And you go to the Arbor Tech website for deals and discounts on Arbor Tech tools for power carving and having fun. Don't go to the website. Don't really sell me stuff. Stop trying to sell me stuff. I just want to go to YouTube and not hear advertisements. Do you, do you know TJ's with the from China? Yeah. Oh, okay. He's asking uh, if you're going to do a wrestling belt. Ha, a wrestling belt would be fun. I think if I did do a wrestling belt, it would have to be for something fun and interesting. I could do like a cool 3D print or a CNC of like a form and we could do like a slush mold brass casting. That would be fun. Ooh. We need to do like, maybe we do, oh, wow. I just gave, you just gave me a great idea. Maybe we do the wrestling belt will be who wins the go-kart challenge. And every year you have to give it to the new guy. You don't get to keep it. You got to actually has to like travel through. You get to put your initials on it somewhere. And then you got to bring it back and give it to the guy who wins if you don't win. What um, do you think of that? What's in the cup? I want to uh, give up my wrestling belt. I want it third square. What? This is uh, what guys asking what's in the cup. What's in the cup? I have coffee. Splash of milk, one Splenda. Not sponsored. Yeti, not sponsored. What? See the heat coming out? That's from like four hours ago. It's still hot. Uh, are you ever going to do a blooper video? A blooper video is funny. I don't really have too many bloopers, to be honest with you. I, Because I, I, I very rarely, I mean, the, the only bloopers I have is like me like, picking my nose or like pulling a hair out of my nose before my vlogs, because that's, I always do a little bit of like me fiddling with the camera because I spend five minutes just stretching my face and looking at the camera and doing this. I just do it for fun. And then I show you guys like 10 seconds of it every time, but there is about three minutes before every vlog of me just doing facial exercises in camera. That's, but I don't really have too many bloopers. I, I never really, I haven't really caught an accident on camera. Not that I could remember. I guess I did. There was an accident and I showed it recently where, oh, I was cutting, I was on the sanding pad. We have the big giant sanding discs here. And when you sand metal on a sanding disc, this is just a little tip for everybody to know, that metal is heating up right at the sanding disc. And if you're not moving it around, if you're not moving it around on the sanding disc and you're cutting, you're sanding metal, even wood, but metal more so, you're heating up the glue behind the disc. So if you just stick a piece of metal, you're heating up the glue, making that sanding disc become a little wrinkly and then all of a sudden it just rips and blows apart especially when you're doing on a 20 inch disc or a 35 inch disc it's really scary so i was sanding something recently maybe it was the scissor video i can't remember i was sanding something and then the the disc blew apart so i showed that in slow-mo that was a blooper so uh, let's see. is this micro is that the microphone I'm not sure. I don't know what mic I'm on. I'm up on the computer. Don't know if I asked this. What's your favorite build project or job? Oh, I don't know. I like making knives. They're fun. But, you know, a lot of people want me to make knives for, for, for money. I, I, I'm not there yet. I'm still learning. How many cameras do you have gone through over the years? What's your favorite? I got a Sony A6400. No time limit. It's amazing when, grow, when grinding for hours. That's good to know. I didn't know that. Um, that's from Dave. Evader knives. Um, I have it's here somewhere. It's over there. I'm shooting a. I'm playing. I'm playing around with a uh, with a shaper. I'm doing a little. I might be doing a video with shaper. You know the router that does this. Um, and my camera's over there. I have a can. Uh, Canon D80. 80 D. Um, I had a Nikon 6400 670 72. I don't know what the hell the names of these things are. Why do they name them? Why don't they just name it the third camera, the fourth camera, the fifth camera? Nikon 7100, maybe, is what I had before. I bought that used from David, uh, David the Drunken Woodworker, David Picciuto. Um, I used that for a while. Before that, I had a flip camera. And I made like my, my first 70 videos were made on a flip camera. That just one day stopped working, so that made me go to a real camera. So I went from a flip camera to the Nikon 7100 to the Canon D80. So I went from three cameras. 
the 7100 I had two of because I bought a second one because one got a little beat up, but it stopped working. And then when the other one showed up, it started working again. So then I had two of them for a while. Now Taylor has both of those and she uses them in her studio, the Nikons. And uh, do you have a piece lying around nearby you that is that you use the Arbitech on? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I wonder. I have uh where the hell is that piece? I do have a piece in here somewhere. I don't know where it is. It might be over at the barn. I made a dish. I keep seeing it in my peripheral vision knowing I got to bring it in the house. Right. I don't think I have anything right here. Um, somebody was asking the best way to support the channel. I said uh, subscribe, comment, and go to the Patreon. Yeah, that's it. You can go ch check out my Patreon. I have a Patreon. I'm, I'm going to try and, you know, I go through phases with my Patreon. So if any of my Patreons are, are watching, you know that, you know, I go through spurts of posting a lot. I kind of take some time off and then I go through spurts of posting a lot on my Patreon. Every one of my videos that I do will then be voiced over and available on Patreon with like a director's soundtrack of me talking about what I'm doing. So upcoming Patreon videos that I haven't made yet are the, the voiceover for the stool video, the one with the finger joints and then the voiceover for the Shaquille O'Neal stool, mm -hmm. which I haven't done yet. But that's uh, for me that the, that's one way of, uh, you could support me there. It's only a dollar a month is all I ask. You can give me you can give me a hundred dollars a month if you want. I'm not gonna stop you, but I only need you only need to give me a dollar. Um, so a fun question is uh, if you could make the gadgets for any superhero, who would it be? And hmm. then, um, another question that might be good is advice for people who are new to making. Uh, I would like to work for James Bond if he's out there listening. James Bond. I could make little tiny cool fun shit for you. Not nearly as cool as is Roman Boutin. You know who Roman Boutin is? No. He's the guy that makes like the coin with like the beating heart. Oh yeah, yeah. those are awesome. Tony, if you don't know who the, uh, Roman Boutin is, you 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 unbelievable mm -hmm. stuff. Um, anyway, we talked about it on the podcast. You got to look up Roman Boutin's coins. He makes coins with moving parts that are just un incredible. Um, uh, uh, what was the other question? Advice for new makers. And new makers, just experiment. I said it yesterday. The most important thing is what's up, bro. Hey. What's your name? What's your name? Joe. Joe. Joe just came in. I don't know who he is. Keep six feet away from me. Um, the most important thing is uh, to experiment. Experiment with tools. Experiment with techniques. Don't just jump right in. That's really a big mistake. A lot of people jump right in and they fail. They get upset. Every, 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 every attempt is a is a is a is an attempt at that works for you. That is the most important thing for new makers. Just experiment. Do you have any questions, Joe? Not really. We're all getting a good tour. All right. New. We have a new contestant here in the rest of the shop today. Um, what do we got? Let's see. Make um, channels have. How do we go about visiting you? I said wait until the quarantine is over and we'll do classes. Yeah, we are. Uh, I talked with Tal last night. She's like, I'm really anxious to get back to doing the classes. So that's good. Make channels truly have an important role now that many of the young generation lack the technical insight to convert an idea into something real. Keep it up. Thank you very much. I think it's really important. You know, it's so funny. I dropped off a, a 3D printer at Taylor's house this week, Taylor's work studio. And uh, she's like, I got five minutes. And she's she's like, she'll just figure it out. On, like, no instructions needed. Just go to YouTube, type in the, the model to make, and you have some knucklehead like me talking about it. What what version of the Leatherman do you use? I personally like more than anything else the the Surge. Even all the new ones are, are, are hokey. Sure. Um, the surge is the best one. It's got the scissor. It's got the scissor on it. It's got uh, one thing I think that's really cool, which is something that people overlook, is you got this saw, this this little saw, but it's designed to take any bayonet type of tool. They could stick this in a jigsaw, so it takes any jigsaw tool. I think genius to use. Um, so for me personally, I like this. I use so many of them. I have like 15 of these and they're everywhere I go. There's one sitting nearby me that I could use. And I wear them out the, the, My favorite one with the bell clip on it, which I used right up until recently, the, the jaw broke. So I've been meaning to just either make another one with a bell clip or just convert the top, just take it apart and put it back together. Um, here's a, here's an interesting question in that. Uh, the question is how do you go about structuring your day? So I imagine that's a good, productivity question like how do you maintain productivity as an independent uh you got to make little lists for yourself just you got to just every day say these are the four things i want to try and get done or the five things i want to get done you know here i just every once in a while i just do a little brain dump but these are the things i need to do this week like by the friday these five things i want to get done you know that's just really the most important thing is to just keep little lists for yourself and say by the end of the week i want this video to be done 
and uh, or oh, I'm gonna make a brick. I want to do a brick. I'm gonna do a brick mold. I'm gonna do cast fired bricks. I'm gonna cast the the brick out of mud and clay, and then we're gonna fire it in the even heat oven. We got uh, three minutes. Three minutes, Troy. I wish I knew who is up next. Troy, can you text me? Can somebody put in the in the notes who's next? I want to push everybody to the next channel. Uh, have you considered doing a daily challenge uh, during the quarantine? Damn. In my shop, only people with iPhones get direct messages from me. Right. I'm trying to text Troy, and I ask Troy who's next, and I get a... The green, because it's got to be... Yep. Not delivered. Uh, Damn. Somebody so. says, uh, movie props. Well, you got, this, you got the uh, Stormtrooper helmet. Um, Stormtrooper helmet's up there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, let's... Do you have a, what's your next large restoration project you have in mind? Look at all that garbage I have. Uh, my next large restoration project, I don't know. Uh, oh, you know what? Um, Rob's here. Rob, get the grinder. <laughs> Rob's going to get the grinder. We're going to, there's Rob. Um, we're going to probably work on the printing press. Probably work on the print. There's Joe. Joe, don't get in. Uh, okay. Don't just get in. Just thread the Arbortech channel. The Go around guy. me. It's the same guy as yesterday. Oh, same guy as yesterday. So just thread Arbortech. Go to the Arbitech channel. Um, yeah, the next big uh, restoration will be the, the the printing press that I showed everybody yesterday that's out in the driveway. It's from 1860. It's a, it's a, a, a hoe, H-O-E, uh, Washington hand press is what it's called. And it's missing some big parts, which we're going to recreate. So right, Yeah, Nick St. Amand, Nick St. Amand, abstract freehand power carving. Continuing Nick St. Amand. Abstract freehand power carving. He did yesterday. He made table legs. So if you guys didn't watch, he did a big glue up and then he's kind of doing a, a, a freestyle, taking those glue ups and making them into sexy curves. So guys, thank you all very much. This will be up for the watching. Tony, I love you. Everybody, we're done. Thank you very much. See you guys soon. Thanks, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm going to end this.